All of prophecy in the very first word in Genesis 1-1 in Hebrew, Breshit. It's all there encoded. If you remember Isaiah 25, God says, I declared the end from the beginning. So if you want to know the end, you got to go to the beginning. It's not just the New Testament. There are over 3,000 references to the Old Testament in the book of Revelation. And if you don't know which ones to connect to it, how are you going to know what they're really talking about? So you really have to go back to the beginning to understand God's calendar, uh, because that's when everything is going to be happening. That's important. How is the events of, of what's happening today tied to that calendar? How do we understand it? What, what, what biblical proportion of prophecy is tied into the calendar of God? Almost every prophecy is tied into the calendar of God. Uh, one great example I like to give is Zechariah 8. Uh, verse 18 and 19. I mean, how many of you uh, want to understand prophecy? Okay, some of you may be prophecy students, but guess what? If you don't know the God's calendar, you're, you're going to be like a ship wandering in the ocean without a compass. Uh, because in Zechariah uh, 8, 18 and 19, it talks about four different fasts. Okay, and the Jews have been doing this fast now for about 1,400 years still. And it says these four fasts will be turned to feast days. Well, if we don't know when those four fasts are, it talks about the fast of the fourth month and the fifth month was not talking April and May. And so it, if you don't know when those fasts are, you won't know when the prophecy is fulfilled. I mean, here's a prophecy from the time of Zechariah that these fast days will turn to feast days. Well, they've been fast days for the last 2,400 years. But if you don't know when they fall on, our cal on the biblical calendar you're not going to know when the prophecy is fulfilled. Let's understand this. The Nord Stream Pipeline. Yes. How many of you heard of it? Do you understand what happened with the Nord Stream Pipeline? And why? And why? And how is that tied to biblical calendar, for example? Uh, exactly. As many of you know, uh, many believe, and you can check this out, uh, that the United States was responsible for blowing up that pipeline because it was up in the Baltic Sea. You have St. Petersburg, Russia, and Russia supplied a pipeline down to Germany where they could get gas, and that's how it was supplied to Europe. Well, America, with the war going on between Russia and Ukraine, uh, they wanted to stop the gas pipeline and blow it up. Well, what happened, uh, if, when you go to the news, uh, you're going to find out that on June 5th, this is what it's going to say, June 5th of 2022, there were 14 NATO allies with over 45 ships, 7,000 personnel, and they kicked off the Baltic Sea operations from Stockholm, Sweden. All right. Well, see, we're there. We're part of that. And many believe that is the very day that we had divers who went down a couple hundred feet and just planted those bombs. And then they were blown up on September 26th of 2022. The fascinating thing is when it got kicked off on June 5th, that was Pentecost. And when it blew up on September 26th, that was Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. But unless you connect that, you don't see that this isn't just a coincidence. God's hand, uh, you know, is all over it. How did you come up with this? It's fascinating that you understand how the biblical calendar falls in different seasons. And, and yes. for us, June is my kid's birthday, my mother's birthday. But it's more than that. God's month almost seems to land in certain events. Yet, how did you come up with that connection? Well, it's because I've been doing this for about 20 years, and I just love looking at current events. And LCDI Ministries, ESM.US, we supply every year a biblical calendar that connects the Gregorian calendar with the biblical calendar, so you can look at the connections. When anything historic happens, you go to that calendar, and you can see what day it is on the biblical calendar. One of the amazing things, for example, is solar eclipses can only happen on a new moon. Lunar eclipses can only happen on a full moon. So that's why God had them celebrate the new moons every month and Passover's on a full moon and Tabernacles is on a full moon. So when he sends signs, it'll happen. 
the eclipses are set for the new moon and the full moon, which is why all of the Jewish holidays are based on that. But you were talking about the times and seasons. When we hear the word season, this is a problem in, in uh, Genesis 114. It talks about how God created the sun and the moon. And the number one reason, we think it was for light and heat, but the number one reason he says is for signs. And then he says, seasons, days, and years. But the word season there, when we hear season in the sun, what do we think of? Winter, spring, summer, fall. But in Leviticus 23, when it's talking about the feasts of the Lord, what do you think of when you think of feast? Food. Food. It's the same Hebrew word. So how can one Hebrew word be translated as fall and at the same time as food? Mm. It's because the English translators were wrong. Mm. It doesn't mean either of those. But it, the word for seasons means an appointed time, like God has a calendar. And he says, this is the day this is going to happen. And uh, when you think about that, I have, I have a lot I'm going to cover here pretty quick, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. The spring festivals like Passover, They were known as um, an appointed time. And so the Jews had to kill the lamb on Passover. And so every year they kill the lamb on Passover. Why did they do that? Because Messiah is going to die on Passover, on Nisan 14. So they were dress rehearsals for what was going to come. 